Hey guys, this is Mrs. Krause, and in this video we're going to discuss osmosis, which is one of the parts of your Unit 3, Part 4 notes on cell membrane and transport. Okay, so osmosis, we've already talked about simple diffusion and facilitated diffusion at this point, but unlike those two um, types of diffusion, osmosis only involves the movement of water across a selectively permeable membrane. I remember a selectively permeable membrane lets certain things across, but not others. So in this case, the membrane is allowing water to pass across the membrane, but not necessarily other particles. Okay. This is a passive process. And the reason it's passive is because water is moving down its concentration gradient. So when water is moving down its gradient, it's going from an area of high water concentration to an area of low water concentration. So it's like riding a bike down a hill from a high to a low point. Doesn't take a lot of energy to ride your bike down the hill, so it's a passive process. Now one thing we have to keep in mind is, yes, we are moving from an area of high water concentration to an area of low water concentration, but we also have to consider the solute particles, which are dissolved particles found in the water. So let's take a look at this picture. Um, in this picture, these little blue molecules with the two little white circles at the top are water molecules. And then the green molecules are solute particles, so those would be dissolved in the water. Okay. This structure in the middle, this phospholipid bilayer, is the cell membrane, and we have two solutions on either side of the membrane. On the left side of the membrane, the solution appears to have a higher water concentration and a lower solute concentration than the solution on the other side. That's because it has more water molecules and fewer solute molecules. Okay, so on the other side, that means we have a lower water concentration and a higher solute concentration. We see that we have fewer water molecules on this side and we have more solute particles. So we know that water is going to move from an area of high water concentration over here to an area of low water concentration over here. So water should move from the left side to the right side of the membrane. Now if we weren't considering water concentration and we just knew the solute concentration, we might say the water was moving from an area of low solute concentration to an area of high solute concentration. So that's why I included this up here. In osmosis, water's moving from an area of high water concentration, which means there's a low solute concentration, to an area of low water concentration over here, which means it has a high solute concentration. Now, we've got three main types of solutions that we're going to be looking at that we could place a cell in and have osmosis occur across the cell membrane. Those three types of solutions start out with the prefixes iso, hypo, and hyper. So I want to look at what those prefixes actually mean. Iso means the same. So an isotonic solution outside the cell should have the same both water and solute concentrations as the solution inside the cell. Hypo means low. So that means the solute concentration outside the cell in that hypo solution is going to be lower than the solute concentration of the solution inside the cell. I find that a little bit confusing because I always like to think about the water concentration instead when I'm predicting the direction of water movement, but hypo does refer to the solute concentration of that outside solution. Hyper means high, so that type of solution outside the cell would have a higher solute concentration than the solution inside the cell. So let's take a look at some pictures of cells in those types of external solution. So yes, 
our first type of solution starts with ISO and it ends with the term tonic. In fact, all of the solutions end with tonic. So we've got isotonic solutions, hypotonic solutions, and hypertonic solutions. But in an isotonic solution, that solution outside the cell has the same water and solute concentration as the cell itself. And that makes sense because iso means the same. So this external solution, this isotonic solution in my picture, has 10% solute and 90% water. If I add them together, I get 100%. So those are the only two things in that solution. And then inside the cell, we have the same concentrations, 10% solute, 90% water. Now, when a cell is placed in an isotonic solution, water does move across the cell membrane both into and out of the cell, but it does so at the same rate, so the cell won't change in size. The reason water is moving both into and out of the cell is just due to random molecular movement of the water across the cell membrane. But again, it's at the same rate, so our cell shouldn't have a net gain or loss of water and should stay the same size. Okay, A little memory trick for isotonic solutions. When you place a cell in an isotonic solution, the cell says, I so happy. It does not want to gain or lose water. Okay, now let's move on to a hypotonic solution. <coughs> so with a hypotonic solution, the solution outside the cell has a higher water and lower solute concentration than the cell itself. Now that makes sense when you break down the word because hypo means low and hypotonic solutions have a low solute concentration. So let's look at our picture. That outside solution, that hypotonic solution, is 10% solute, 90% water, whereas inside the cell, we have 20% solute and 80% water. So again, outside the cell, we have higher water, lower solute concentration. Water should move from an area of high water concentration outside the cell to an area of low water concentration inside the cell. So I drew an arrow pointing into the cell to indicate the direction of water movement. So again, water is going to move into the cell from a high water concentration outside to a low water concentration inside. And my little memory trick for a hypotonic solution is in hypotonic solution, the cell is like a hippo. It drinks water and gets bigger. Okay, our next type of solution is a hypertonic solution. Hypertonic solution is when your solution outside the cell has a lower water and higher solute concentration than the cell itself. Remember, hyper means high, so that hypertonic solution outside the cell has a high solute concentration. Looking at our image, the outside environment has 15% solute, 85% water, whereas inside we've got 5% solute and 95% water. So that hypertonic solution outside the cell has a higher solute and lower water concentration than the cell itself. We should see water moving out of the cell from a high water concentration inside towards a low water concentration outside. So that's why I drew an arrow moving out of the cell into the external solution. Okay. Again, water is going to move out of the cell from a high water concentration inside to a low water concentration outside. And my memory trick for hypertonic solution is when a cell's in a hypertonic solution, it gets really hyper. So it runs around and it sweats a lot, and in the process, it loses water. Okay. Now let's take a look at what happens to two different types of cells, animal cells and plant cells, when they're placed in these three types of external solution. Now, you don't have to write all of this on your page. Definitely summarize, um, and I've included pictures here for reference as I'm talking about it, but you don't need to necessarily draw those pictures. Okay. 
So for an animal cell that's placed in isotonic solution, remember in isotonic solution, water's coming into and out of the cell, but at the same rate. So the cell size is staying consistent. That's good for animal cells um, because they're maintaining a constant size. So we call that the normal state of animal cells. Now for plant cells in isotonic solution, that's not necessarily the case. Um, the problem with plant cells being in isotonic solution is they won't have enough water entering their cytoplasm in order um, for the cytoplasm to gain so much volume that it pushes against the cell wall. When there's a lot of water in the cytoplasm, it'll be able to push against the cell wall and create something called turgor pressure. That's required for plant stems to stand upright. So when you don't have that much water in your cytoplasm, like in this state where we see water coming in and out, um, we don't have that turgor pressure against the cell wall, so a plant that has cells in this state is going to be a little bit wilted, and we call a single plant cell in that state flaccid. Okay. Now, let's say we were talking about a hypotonic solution. Remember, in hypotonic solution, cells take in water. So animal cells in hypotonic solution um, swell when they take in water, um, and their cell membranes could potentially burst if they take in too much water over a short period of time. When the cell membrane of um, an animal cell bursts, that's called lysis, and a cell that's in this state would be considered lysed. Okay, so you actually see water going into the cell, but then the cell membrane rupturing here or breaking. Now, a plant cell in a hypotonic solution is taking in water, and it's not losing any water. So that's going to increase the volume of the cytoplasm here. That's going to create pressure against the cell wall. And again, that's called turgor pressure, and that's going to help keep the plant stem upright because all these cells inside the stem have this pressure. Now, this is the normal state of plant cells because you want to keep your stem upright, and a cell in this state would be considered turgid. And that's why we actually water plants with just plain old water and don't put uh, dissolved solutes in it. We want the plant cells to be turgid. We want them to be taking in the water. Okay. Now, shifting gears in a hypertonic solution, an animal cell is going to lose water. So animal cells um, are going to end up looking like a raisin when they lose water and decrease in size. So we'll call a cell in this state a shriveled cell. Okay, plant cells in hypertonic solutions don't really change their overall shape. And that's because the cell wall can't change shape. In this case, it looks to be very rectangular. So overall, the cell is not going to change shape. However, losing water is going to decrease the volume of the cytoplasm so much that the cell membrane is actually going to start to pull away from the cell wall. And you see that happening here, these pockets where the cell membrane is pulling away. Um, that process of losing water and having your cell membrane pull in is called plasmolysis, and we would call a plant cell in this state plasmalized. And your entire plant would be super wilted at that point. Okay, and that's it for osmosis. Thanks.